Hello. Yes. Hello. Um, okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um. So today we're looking at leadership. What leadership is and how we um demonstrate it in the workplace. So for before we start, we we'll just like to have you ever been maybe. Update. Hello. Hello. Okay, Gite, you want to speak? Okay, I never heard you. Uh, your name is from Michigan. Maybe kindly you will give the question. What is it? You have some network issues. Maybe you can just start again. Okay. But can you hear me now? Clearly. Okay. So I said, like, have you ever been in a leadership position? Like, what post have you led? Have you and have you been appointed before? Maybe for a position. You're breaking. Wow, the network is really terrible. All right, can you hear me now? yes clearly okay. okay great so i'm saying like have you been in a leadership position before where you have to maybe lead a team or you were appointed to a position it could even be maybe you had your class captain in secondary school or even your undergraduates any of those stuff You've been so can you just like tell us which position did you hold? Yeah, I was the academics prefect in our high school. You were the academics prefect. Academics prefect, okay, in high school. Well, that's great. Yeah. I can imagine. So, how is the academics prefect different from the head prefect? Like, what are your duties? What do you have to do? Uh, okay, mine was to just make sure that uh, to confirm with the prefect that the teachers uh, were actually attending the classes. Okay. Um, the cards were offered, the exams were fair, such things. Anything are concerned with the academics uh, from the student's perspective. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now I get. 
So like you check in if um teachers are coming to class, just how the students were faring the academics or any of those stuff. Yeah, all of them. Okay, okay. So yeah, I can imagine. So now like maybe you've been the leader um, or probably you've been the follower. Just think about the best leader you've ever worked with. Like what are some of the qualities you admire, you admire maybe some of your best leader? Okay, so if I said, you led the M, okay. Oh. Okay, Kola, Kola just said like, is the lead and is leading a church-based youth voluntary organization consisting of 2,000 persons, wow. Wow. So, um, the, and Zerufai, you led the MCH team for two years before one year ago. Okay, mother child health. Oh, that's nice. But um, I would have loved to hear more about it, but we don't have much time left because of the connectivity um, issue in the beginning. But just think back about maybe some of the leaders you've worked with or maybe you've had. What are some of their qualities? Like I'm talking about the good leaders. Just look at the best leaders you've ever had. What are some of the qualities that you admire about the person? Selflessness, one, that's one of the qualities. So any other person? Being non-nonsense. <laughs> yeah? Being a non-nonsense person. OK. Um, any other person ability to carry people along in decision in decision making, they are dependable. Wow, that's great. So those are like good qualities of um leadership of a good leader. And we, vice versa, we know some of the qualities of um some annoying, maybe not so good leaders as well. But then before we look at what leadership is and what it is all about. You know that everyone has the capacity to lead. It's just like um, maybe parenting. You have the capacity to do it, but it's that does not mean that everybody can like everybody have the capacity to do it. But that does not mean like everybody should do be in a leadership position because being a leader is made is more than just being in charge. Because you should realize like you are responsible for everyone in your charge. You're not just like oh I'm the leader and then you're the person in charge and all of those stuff. And you, as a leader, just as um, the quality they mentioned, being selfless, as a leader, if things go wrong, if things go right, you give away like the credit to whoever it is due. And when things go wrong, you just don't like start pointing fingers and start blaming people. Oh, this is why this is why this like you try to work together, share new ideas as a team. And um, that's what um Jerry Fire So and you are more concerned about the human beings and not just the output. But yes, you are concerned about the output, but your main um, concern is the people, your followers, like how they feel and all of those things. Then also being able to create an environment where your followers are able to maybe to voice out, they should be able to like share new ideas because they know like as you are their leader, they understand like you welcome new ideas. So there's room for them to grow and um, credit and also be creative. So imagine if you are maybe working with a team, then the leader is somewhat like maybe even before you guys have the um maybe the is for maybe the daily stand up or even a meeting about maybe you guys are working on the project. Just imagine if the leader already has maybe outline of or everything they require. So such that during the first stand up, you guys propose new ideas, it was not welcome. During the second meeting, the same thing happened. You are like the team members, they'll just stop thinking, like they'll stop bringing up new ideas because they know at the end of the day it will be ignored. And as such, they will not be able to maybe voice out maybe when they are finding out the project all together, maybe when they need help and the likes. And that's like a toxic environment. So being a leader, you're able to create an environment where the followers they feel like they feel safe to so say when they need help or when they make mistakes. It's very important, especially in the workplace. So but and how and Uh, 
Okay, so um, sorry, but you can hear me now. My network is unstable. Okay, great. So I said, like, before you you can maybe lead a team or even maybe have followers and the likes, you have to first of all recognize yourself, know who you are, if you are capable of doing that, if you have those qualities. Fine, you may not have all the qualities, no one is perfect. But as um as a self-leader, like in self-leadership, you'll be aware of your flaws and how you can work on them. So that is basically what we talk about here. For example, if you have um okay, say um Polar Journal, as is the leader of like leading the youth team and all of those things. You cannot just walk up to your followers one morning and ask them, oh, what are some of your bad qualities? And you expect them to like start listing them out, especially in the workplace. If you are a leader in the workplace and maybe your, your team members, you cannot expect maybe your manager one day. For instance, if your manager just comes to you, oh, like they, you should tell them some of their bad qualities. Nobody will voice out. Everybody will be like, oh, you are good, you are this, you are that. Like nobody wants to lose their job or any of those things. Or they, they, they don't want to be like the bad person. So in most cases, people will not like really tell you what your bad qualities are. And that's where being self-aware comes in. You should be able to recognize that on your own. You should be able to think back and just like um, recognize some of your flaws and how you can work on them. So that is where self-awareness comes in. And how can we do this? How can you go about like being self-aware, especially when you are in the leadership position? So one way you can do that is like we have the character traits check. And you can do that by, oh, you think back about maybe some of the um your, the worst leaders or maybe the bad leaders you've had. Then you think about what are the qualities that make them bad? What are some of the qualities you disliked about them? So, and you can scale it from a scale of one to five. How much of those traits do you possess? Do you possess? Then once you've recognized that, you can then develop maybe a plan on how you will improve. Say, for example, you worked with a leader that is always maybe yelling and yelling and yelling, and you just don't like that. But then even you, maybe when you are appointed as the, as the new leader, you may not really recognize if you are the yelling type. I'm just using that as an example. If you are the type that yell, maybe, and we are like we are prone to give excuses for our own actions. Oh, it, I yelled because the person was not doing the work the right way. Like, but then if you had the time to um, sit back, and think about it maybe you recognize oh those are some of the qualities you possess so those are some of the things you also do then once you've um you are now self-aware and you are really like you really want to maybe improve you want to start implementing some of the plans you've come up with most times when you want to change the first few days let's say the first three days they're always like um you're always like at the peak so you're like oh i'll change and you're putting in the work but give it a week, you find out that like, you just go back to your old habits if you're not too careful. So that's where being um, self-reflection comes in. So each day you take about, say, two to three minutes to think about ways that you think about the challenge that you may have during the day you, and how you want to maybe handle that, um, that challenge as a leader. Say, for example, before, um, say, you have your team meeting the next day, so before you go for the team meeting, you have the previous day, you have thought about what you guys will discuss, what are some of the challenges you face, how you will approach um, each of those, each, each of the challenges. And if you are the one that recognized, oh, I yell at my um, team members, then you'll be like, every when you self-reflect, you know, oh, then during the meeting tomorrow, I'll try as much as possible not to yell, irrespective of maybe how annoying the person may be at the end of the day. So when you self-reflect each day, you recognize, oh, this is what you, these are some of the flaws you have, and this is what you are going to do to work on them. And once you've done that, the next thing is to self-regulate. And what we mean by this is you reframe yourself from some of the like you can try to control your emotions. Because when you're in a leadership position, there are circumstances or where people will annoy you. Like where you they will annoy you, or even maybe you already had um, maybe a laid out plan, and you guys discussed it together. You all come up with you, you all came up with the um, plan. You are all approved, but they can just be that one person that is just like against that particular plan. 
Maybe we just approach you after you guys have discussed everything and start to um, put like pointing out the holes and just becoming so annoying. So at that point, you have to like self reframe yourself. You watch how you react to the to situations, and there you can ask yourself like on a scale of one to ten, how important is this right now compared to maybe your reputation or based on what you are trying to like improve on. And you find out it may not be all that important. So with that, like you're able to like calm yourself, and you'll be able to um, handle the situation better. So as a leader, well, to start, um, maybe you are in a leadership position. You still, you have to be self-aware of some of your good qualities and your good qualities and the bad qualities that you may have. And after that, you have to self-reflect so that you'll be working on those qualities and do as much as possible to um self regulate as well that is reforming yourself from overreacting in some situations in some situations so the next thing according to um Lars Sodman he said leadership problem arises from you have maybe too little time and then there are people you want to like work with you have to um try to manage people and then there's the power factor when you are being appointed in most cases then at the end of the day you find out uh, you start feeling empowered you start feeling empowered and if you're not too careful the ego can like come into your head and then you start misbehaving anyway so the leadership problem is always we having too little time and then the people and then the power factor as well so what do you mean like too little time say for example say for example you um you have a project you are working on, or even as a leader, say, um, collage with the team you are leading. You guys will have maybe a series of events you want to handle, or maybe you have things planned out. There will always be too little time for you to do to accomplish those things. Even in the workplace, there will be projects, sure. There will be projects that you want to work on, but the time will not always be enough. So you have the too little time, but then that's where the time management um, comes in. So, and the prioritization, that's where they comes in. You recognize the things that are way important, and then you try to like um, approach them based on their priority. So I think with the two little time factor, we already have that handled, like with the time management wow. session we have. Then here we look at people factor. So how are you going to like uh, mingle with people? Because there's not how you be a leader. You definitely have people that, that maybe your followers it could be two three or even two thousand like collagers so just as much as like that so you have to learn how to maybe um work with people so these are some tips on managing people as a leader the first thing here is reflective listening and this comes in in communication so and as we recognize most times our issues come from maybe um for communication you know like not communicating effectively the person you are speaking with does not really understand what you are saying and all of those things so to avoid that the first thing is um, reflective listening and what we mean by this is if someone walks up to you and the person is um maybe saying something or maybe the person has a complaint or even has an idea or just communicating with you so here what we mean by reflective listening is you try as much as possible you listen like you listen to the person once the person has said the ideas or maybe the complaint or whatever it is the person was telling you you try to like you paraphrase it to show like that you are you were listening and in that in as you are paraphrasing you understand you get to know if you really understand what the person is saying or you get to know like more details if you need more details for you to understand so that is like reflective listening and in some cases you can even like um you can even like imitate the way the person's um body language as well if the person is folding the hand you can as well fold the hand just to show like you relate well with what the person is saying so that is um like reflective listening then the second one is you should be assertive so you assert yourself as a leader then we have manage um different levels of skills so if you're in a leadership position and you have um, people you are working with or people that are working with you, either way you are working together, you have and say for example, you're working on a, I would say you're working on a project. There will be people that are maybe um, 
they are more proficient in a particular way we'll have the individuals that they don't need much uh, monitoring once you assign them the role or what they have to do they get it done they don't need much monitoring we have the novice on the team like you have different people from different backgrounds different levels of skills so you should be able to recognize each person's um needs and you should be able to like provide those things or if you are working with somebody that more attention, like needs more explanation. So you should be able to give that. Um, if you are working with someone like that, gets the job done, does not need much this um, attention, you should be able to recognize that as well. Because if you are giving too much attention to someone that can like get the work along, it will be as if you are micromanaging the person and maybe you are like suffocating the person. Whereas if you are giving less attention to the person that needs it, it will be as if you are not even putting them through what they have to do. So, and like you are just neglecting them. So you have to recognize each person in your team, what they are working on and if, um, their skills level as well. Then you should be able to like encourage people to share their ideas. And that's one of the qualities of being a good leader. You should create an environment where people are open to share ideas. And even team members are like, they are open up to tell you when they make a mistake or when they need help or any of those things. So as a leader as well, you should be able to like inspire people or even motivate them to get the work done. It's not only when you maybe when you are in the office, that's when everybody like they get they are doing their job. And once you step out, you just like face the other, they start the two other things entirely. And then as a leader, you should be able to identify or you should be able to recognize when there is rivalry in your team. And once you've recognized that, you should be able to like um, address it accordingly and not just like ignore it. Because if care is not taken, like it can lead to beefing within the team and before you know what's going on there'll be like maybe bad thoughts and like so as a leader you should be able to like recognize when there's rivalry in your team especially when you are leading the team and then the most important factor here is you should have inner confidence in your in yourself in your capacity as well to lead a team so now we have um different leadership styles like how people use their team for the different leadership styles we have. So we have we're talking about four leadership styles. We have the autocratic leadership style, the democratic, the bureaucratic, and the charismatic style. So from the um the autocratic style is just, just is the leadership style where we have the leader is the one like dictates what needs to be done, like you know the dictatorship and at first, if you look at it, it's like the leadership style that most people don't like to um, to be led on because people like to share their ideas. But this style can also work well when you have a very um, tight schedule, when you have a very tight schedule and you just have to get the um, work done in a very short period of time. So here, the, as a leader, you, really, you recognize the problem, so you know what needs to be done. So here, you can just like assign each member what they need to be done, and they get the job done. Even like you not ask for their opinion or any of those things. So that's like the autocratic leadership style. Then we have the democratic leadership style. The democratic leadership style. Here. Um, each member is like they contribute their, they ask for their opinion. Like and here is usually useful when on a long term, um, long term project. So when you're working on a long term project, it's very good to operate with um, the democratic leadership stuff because here everyone will feel like their ideas are welcome. But one thing you have to recognize is in democratic leadership style, it's always difficult for conclusion because you have to like weigh each idea. You have to you have to weigh each idea. You have to like um like discuss every idea each person brings to the table, and then why this one will work, why this will not work, why you have to go with this. So at the end of the day, you find out like before you make a decision, it takes a longer period of time to come to a decision. So that is a democratic leadership style. But here, like members will open up to that, like they will share ideas. And once you've made one thing about democratic style is once the decision has been made, everybody will be like motivated to work on it because they were involved in the decision-making process compared to the autocratic leadership style. 
So the bureaucratic leadership style, this is basically like when you are working and it's just a routine, you have rules that you have to follow, uh, you, you need your followers to follow, no need for like sharing ideas, just list of rules. You have, for example, and this is usually used when um, maybe your work, the work require is just like a routine job. So it's like a routine job. So it's just list of rules you have to follow. For example, if it's maybe you're working on it, um, like in the engineering sector where they maybe they are in the construction and they have to follow rules for um, safety procedure and all of those things. As a leader, you just have to make sure like your your followers are following the rules that are laid down. No need for like sharing ideas or any of those things in the bureaucratic leadership style. And here, the decision making like they follow the clear chain of command based on established rules and regulation. So that is with the bureaucratic leadership style. Well, we have the charismatic leadership style, and it's very similar to the democratic style. But one thing with the charismatic leadership style is as the leader can as much as possible to um, motivate the followers to. So here, the the followers they still the leader as let's say like you're part of them like the relationship is much stronger they have a much stronger relationship so like that is like with the charismatic leadership style and how it is different from the democratic leadership style is it's quite similar but with democratic leadership style is not really based on like you don't you may not have a very close relationship with your team member but with the charismatic leadership they like you have a close relationship with them so those are the four leadership styles we have. Each of them have their advantages, their disadvantages. But from the four like that you've, we've mentioned, like that we've talked about, which one do you think you like to operate or like you like to lead with, or just like share your opinion? Which one do you think you are, like to use? Charismatic. Why do you choose charismatic style, Kolaja? Charismatic. Um, everyone prefers the charismatic leadership style. People feel involved in the decision making. Yeah, that's true. So also in the democratic, they feel involved in the decision making. It's just the charismatic. The relationship is much more better. So yes, autocratic. So still, no. Oh, please unmute and speak because I was not expecting like people would choose the autocratic style. <laughs> So do you um, maybe want to unmute and speak or you type it? Why do you prefer the autocratic style? So um, Zerify said the democratic, you want the absolute power. Well, <laughs> okay. Well, I hope you are joking. Though the autocratic is also good, but as I said, it's more useful when you are working on a short-term project and even maybe the people you are working with, which may not be on a long-term um, basis. So like just want to get the job done fast as, as fast as possible. So that's where like the autocratic comes in basically, at, at least for me. So personally, I prefer the um, charismatic or the democratic at least. Like, so okay, Gite. What leadership are you practicing at Sen Academy? Huh? What kind of leadership are you practicing at Sen Academy? Okay, so Athen Academy, I would like to think um, um Athen Academy uh, is actually um democratic actually, like with my team. Okay, my team we have Pascaline and Margaret and Aaron actually. So what we do is for each, before we come up with each session, say for example, when I was coming up with the leadership um tutorials, the document. So we have a meeting, so we share because they believe in fair work. Yeah, it's more like democratic, actually. So everybody will voice out their opinion. OK, before we choose the topics, we ever do like, we, all of us, we just like work on different topics. So we, come, we came up with different topics. Then we discussed it, and we chose the one that we feel is good. <laughs> Autocratic commitment, OK. <laughs> but that is like, <laughs> because it's short. Okay, so as I was saying, so everybody came like after we've come up with what we want to like work with, 
then each person will discuss it and the team members will they'll share their ideas what they think about it where you can improve what you can what you should include or remove and if you if you feel oh that it makes sense you go on if it doesn't make sense you tell us why it does not make sense so it's not like democratic style actually so like within my team that is career team at 10 academy so then the next one we have how do you inspire actions or motivate people because as a leader you have to um you have to have that quality to motivate your team to get the work done so one thing you need to recognize is when forming a team you should be with people like that you share common values and beliefs and i'm not saying maybe um what i mean by this is when you are working with a team you usually have like a goal that you are working towards you have a, what you want to achieve so everybody on that team should be on the same path in that group so, <laughs> then academy does not as a democratic yeah we are more like democratic or charismatic so yes so um we have your team should have like a common value and belief system like everybody should be on the same page as to the goal because if you have people like you have varying um, values on the team and you guys are not on the same page usually it needs to, like if you're not able to like easily inspire such person because the person did not even believe in the <laughs> no we don't want to try that today so you, you the person you know may not like really work well on the team then another thing is in a team for the team to really work well, you need to like it should be loyalty and then there's trust and there's empathy and there should be a sense of belonging. So all of those things is what inspires people to like work together. So when forming a team, you should look for maybe people that have common values and belief system in what it is you want to achieve. And once you've done that, you should be able to um to say that you want to speak. Yeah, yeah, I was about to type it. Uh, can you elaborate more on the sense of belonging when it's come to leadership? Okay, okay, okay. So, yes, so which you should be able to, like, the team should have maybe loyalty, trust, and empathy because that's what's like inspire people to work together. Then, the sense of belonging here, just like how we've said, the leader should create environments that the person will be open to ideas, like, should be open to ideas, open to, um, to their like their creativity so once they have that they will feel like they belong there but like where you if you're working in an environment where their ideas are not welcome the person is not able to like speak up exactly. even when they are facing challenges it's good even even in a professional maybe at the workplace your team member can be facing like a personal challenge altogether but if you create that environment and that's where the charismatic and um, leadership style comes in you have like a good relationship with them they will to like open up oh i'm facing this and most times the personal life will like influence the professional life as well so you should create an environment where your team members like they feel they belong they can open up as well and in doing that so that's where you should understand like when having common values and beliefs you should understand your why why did you create the team or why are you guys working together why are you there as a as a leader why are you there as a follower as well so you should recognize your why then after that then how can you guys work together to get to achieve your aim then what are the things you need to get done what are the steps you need to take to make that thing happen whatever it is you're working on so that's what um leadership is about so here we started by talking about what being a leader is and what it means to be a leader some of the qualities of being a good leader and then we go in we went in to talk more about you um about self-leadership how you should recognize um you should be self-aware of your flaws how you can improve on that as well and the leadership problems that you may face and these are some of the tips on handling people working together managing people and we have the different leadership styles so and this is how you can like maybe motivate your team and the most important thing is you should have a team of people or you that have like common values and belief system so um, at the end of the day, John Maxwell said, leadership is not about title or position or flowchart, organization, hierarchy, any of the stuff. 
So it is about one influencing another person, inspiring another person. So, so now let's take a look at the challenge. So, but before we move on to the challenge, do you have any question or any um, suggestions or anything at all you want to share before we move on to the challenge? So we can move on to the challenge, I guess. Okay, so let me share my screen here. Okay, so you can all see the document. Thanks for allowing me to just follow it. So this is just a table your, your mic is not democratic. <laughs> oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, no, it's democratic. It, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I said, when people hear like great leader, we always think about the Martin Luther King, Gandhi, the um, Mandela and the likes. But leadership is more than, like it is that. But if you look at it, everyone is a leader one way or another. It may not be in the workplace, may not be appointed. But for example, maybe you are the first uh, child you have, you are leading your siblings. So all of those things, one way or another, you, we are all leaders in our different roles. So, and as we've talked about some of the leadership skills and what is required, what exactly sets these individuals apart? Those are some of the things we've talked about, the good leadership skills and how we can develop them, how you can recognize some of your qualities, maybe your flaws and how you can work on them. So, and at its core, leadership is about influencing others to achieve a shared goal. As leaders, we inspire and guide our teams to navigate change and accomplish the organization's objective or whatever it is you're working on. So the tax for this week is we we'll have tax A and B, but don't fret, is they are quite simple. And the deadline is on Friday, 8 p.m. You know the drill already. So yes, the tax A, let me read it. So as a leader, it is it is essential to recognize and acknowledge your strengths and weaknesses and to effectively manage and develop your team. So reflecting on past experiences with ineffective leaders can help you identify traits and to avoid and um, to, to, sorry, let me go back. Reflecting on past experiences with ineffective leaders can help you identify traits to avoid and areas for personal growth. Think about the least favorite leader. Actually, I wanted to say the worst leader, but I was thinking some people will say they've never had the worst leader. Now that you change it to the least favorite. So there's no how you not have a least favorite leader. So think about a least favorite leader you've ever worked with or you have the experience of working with. So it could be maybe your manager, your supervisor, your teacher, your lecturer, your whatever it is. So just think about the person. So here, who was the least favorite teacher you ever had? Eh, not teacher, leader you ever had. Describe their position, the behavior, and any notable characteristics. So, and then what did they do to be your least favorite leader? Identify specific actions, decisions, or behavior that made them ineffective. Then what do you, do you resonate with any of the behaviors of your least, your least favorite leader has? Highlight three weaknesses you believe you have as a leader. So if you work, if you if some of those qualities resonate with you, you list them. If they don't, you can like self-introspect and you list some of your your weaknesses as a leader. So for each of the weaknesses that you that you identified, explain how you aim to improve on them as a leader. So that's what the task A is about. You think about your least favorite leader, then you list some of their qualities. What are the qualities they possess? Why are they your least favorite leader? 
then you try to like um, identify if you recognize if you resonate with any of those behaviors you've identified and if you don't you can just think back reflect <laughs> Oh my god, so stupid. So you can just like think back, you like reflect and you identify some weaknesses that you have as a leader. It's all about mindset and limit to put yourself. Okay. So for each of the weaknesses that you've identified, how do you aim to improve on them as a leader moving forward? So the next tax, which is the tax B, is you are the project manager at Novatech, a software development company. Your team has been tasked with developing Project Phoenix, which is critica a critical new product that will determine the company's future in, in the competitive debt market. So Project Phoenix launch deadline is three months away, and the company's stakeholders are eagerly awaiting its success. So your team consists of diverse individuals with varying levels of experience so here we have john and john is living in two weeks actually so we have john a seasoned developer and key member and key team member with in in-depth knowledge of the project's core component his departure will leave a significant gap in expertise then we have aisha she's a new team member with a background in emerging technologies she suggests and uh, she suggested she has suggested using a different technology, which is the Echo Stack, which she which she's familiar with, and but it's different from the ones your team usually use. Then we have Mark, a, a senior developer with experience in software development. He expressed he expressed concern concerns about the visibility of Aisha's proposed project uh, approach to the project. And we have Raj, which uh, Raj is a mid-level developer with experience in software design patterns. He's been working on the project UI components. We have Lena, a junior developer who has been assisting with testing and debugging. And we have David, a quality assurance engineer responsible for ensuring the product meets the required quality standard. The required quality standards. So here you have different people in your team, each of them different background, different levels of experience. So during the team meeting on Monday, John announced his unexpected departure and that he's leaving in two weeks. So this leaving the team with a significant knowledge gap, I remember is the one with the knowledge about the project core component and added, and with this, it will lead to like added workload for the team. So John's expertise will be solely missed. Aisha suggestion to use EchoStack as part a debate, as it would require significant changes to the project architecture. Mark has expressed concerns about Aisha's proposed approach, citing potential leaks and delays. So as a project manager, it is your responsibility to address the knowledge gap left by John's departure, resolve the disagreements between Mark and Aisha, ensure the project stays on track and meets the immovable deadline. I remember the project is very, very, like it's an essential project that will determine the company's fate. Then the last one is you should motivate and guide the team to overcome challenges ahead. The numbers are wrong. This is I'm sorry. So here, what you have to do is you explain five ways to ensure that John's departure does not and uh, does not have a significant negative impact on the success of the project. So what are you going to do to make sure like John's departure does not have significant negative impact on the project? And remember, it's living in two weeks, so you have two weeks to like plan or whatever it is you want to put in place just to cover the um, knowledge gap that we be behind. Then second one, using the tips for managing people, I find a step-by-step -step approach that we use address Mark's concern and Aisha's suggestion. Then which leadership style 
or style, if it's one, if it's two, you use to motivate and guide the team to ensure the project stays on track and meets the deadline. Explain why you chose that style, give me examples of location where you will use them. So that is that we have for week eight. So once you've done all of this, you make a PowerPoint presentation or if it's a Google slide, it's maximum of 10 slides. Then you convert it to a PDF and you submit it on 10x. And submission time is on Friday, the 7th. So that is what we have for this week. Uh, we expected to list down the names of these favorite leaders we have or just their position and characteristics. No, just their like their position and their characteristics. So not the name. So you just you identify your least favorite leader, if is one, if it's two, just list the um their position, their characteristics, and then from there you um try to identify if you resonate with any of those characteristics you list you listed, then how what steps are you going to take to improve? So that is what this tax is about. The tax A, then the tax B is your project manager and so your team member there are some challenges that you have within the team so how are you going to address this as a team lead what are the things you are going to do to ensure for example like john that is living to ensure like he does not leave a negative um his living does not have negative impact then the second one aisha and um What's the person's the other person's name and second team member anyways that have this argument so how are you going to go about it Okay, so <laughs> so yeah, so just work on that, and that is that. Do you have any question on the challenge, or oh, we can call it today? We still have four uh, six minutes left. All right, I think we are done then. So let me stop recording. Okay, so everything is straightforward. So, in case if you have any question, you can just like ask on Slack. All right, so enjoy the rest of your day and have a nice week. See you next week again for the career session. Bye. Have a democratic evening. <laughs> you too. <laughs>